All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I would talk to you guys about something I've been pretty excited about recently, something I'm going to try, a new experiment for the figs, a new way to grow fig trees in containers. And I hope that you guys will watch this video and come up with some ideas. Um, you know, it's always nice to see what you guys have to say. Uh, hopefully, some of you guys will try this out with me. Um, and then that way we can have a wider range of experience with this method. But essentially we're going to be replicating a vineyard in our containers, um, the soil of a vineyard in the container. Um, and this is largely of course inspired by wine and grapes and viticulture. Um, I recently made a post on our figs here and that's what I'm gonna read to you guys. I'm gonna have this post actually available on the blog very soon. Um, I've been reading up on grapes again and we talked about actually believe it or not almost a year ago uh, I think we did an episode of fruit talk or maybe even it was sometime in the yeah it was about sometime in March I think or maybe even April where we talked about viticulture and the soil in vineyards and how that can translate over to fig trees it's really fascinating how all these different vineyards and different varieties that the vineyards use are like well adapted to the, their location. You know, it's not just the rootstock that's well adapted to the soil, uh, but the scion and the actual variety that fruits and how that adapts to the climate, um, to the orientation of the lands, to the uh, you know all kinds of different things. And it's of course the same, a similar story with figs, right? Um, it's just unfortunate that we don't really have the best information out there with figs. I think wine and grapes is such a valuable area to look in because they just have all these experts and so many people have, that have been devoted to growing grapes for so long that it just the information just isn't there for figs. And um, if you know if. If you could have made figs into wine as good as you could have made grapes into wine, I think um, that would be a total opposite thing and that all the information would probably be out there on figs and not on grapes. So I, I came to the conclusion that a lot of these vineyards use have different soil types, a uh, pretty wide range of, of soil, you know, things like uh, loams and silt and chalky soils and limestone soils and soils with different nutrients and different pH levels as well. And those pH levels definitely impact the nutrients that are available. So if you look at this chart here, you'll see that magnesium as an example, and even sort of a little bit of calcium is absorbed better uh, around a neutral pH, but actually going even towards a slightly alkaline pH of 7.5 is where you see magnesium being absorbed the best. And then you see other nutrients as you go down being absorbed better by a lower pH. And it's pretty much been synonymous with figs for a long time that we should be using lime in our fig trees. In the pots, a lot of old timers recommend it. A lot of people in Italy swear by it. Uh, a lot of growers just think that if you have a limestone heavy soil, you're just going to have a better fig tree that puts out better quality fruits and there's a lot of truth to that it's not just because it's lime but it's more so because the soil is well draining the lime acts as a very good um, moisture regulator in that it drains really well but also holds on to a lot of moisture and that's a bit difficult to understand but even some soil works like that as well I find that um, you know the, the potting soil that I use the soil conditioner a good soil conditioner is going to be very well draining but also hold on to a lot of moisture so um, it's got a mix of like very dense particles and very uh, big particles so that little mix there enables both things to occur um, and then that way let's say in the middle of the summer in a lot of these vineyards the places that they grow them in are very dry and the summer particularly is very dry because that rain lowers the fruit quality, right? It's the same thing with figs. So um, 
you know, a lot of these places have no choice but to either irrigate or in the limestone soil case, they do a really great job of actually providing some moisture to these grapevines, even if there's been no rain all summer. So uh, it's pretty interesting, I think, that limestone is able to do so many things in addition to what I just mentioned, but also raising the pH of the soil and then making different nutrients available, therefore changing the sort of the quality of the wine, the flavor of the wine. And there's a lot of debate into that, I think. You know, there's a lot of probably differing opinions. But for the most part, um, you know, you're losing some nutrients here and you're gaining some nutrients. And overall, I think adding just a wide variety of nutrients is probably going to be better for increasing the um, flavor of, especially the micronutrients, the flavor potentially of our figs. So I'm interested to see how all that works specifically. That was the, really the the home, you know, that that writing home point for me. So what I did last year was I put a lot of lime on top of the soil in my pots. I even put some in the ground, see if I noticed any any differences. And I didn't honestly keep track of the differences. And I didn't really set this up very well and pay close enough attention to it. It was a lot going on. Um, and I didn't really raise the soil pH probably enough to really get myself a, a great benefit. In the past, I had done this like the DePaulo brothers use lime on top of their soil. And I did that for an entire season. And I found it just not to be all that great in terms of vigor. Um, because you have such a high pH, um, you end up losing a lot of nitrogen, as an example, a lot of phosphorus. And that really affects the fig tree in a bad way. And you end up having a lot of uh, stress and the fig mosaic virus really comes out and it's not good in that sense. Well, would this impact the flavor high enough to warrant that? I don't know. But I have a feeling somewhere around 7.5 is probably as high as I'd go. And I'd probably like to stay around that 7.5 range to really experiment with this and to try different nutrients and um, especially the calcium and magnesium, see really what that does uh, when it's more available to the figs. Um, so that's a big part of this is the nutrient availability and the flavor and how that affects it. Now the idea, different how it differs here is that I'm gonna be using from the beginning you set this up right where you have a layer at the bottom, not a layer at the top, but a layer of the bottom of lime or maybe even oyster shell. Uh, marble is another good idea. Just basically creating a cl as close to a limestone bedrock as I can. And what that's going to do is actually pretty much replicate a vineyard in that you have the limestone bedrock. On top of that is a layer of topsoil, usually around a foot. And then that's it, you know? So um, the plants can then draw from the, the moisture in the lime if, if needed. Also use some of the nutrients in the lime. And this also may, this will change the pH just ever so slightly, I think, because on top, having the lime on top is you're watering in the lime and then the lime is going down into the compost, into the potting mix. And then you end up really affecting the pH like that. Whereas if you have it in the bottom layer, a lot of that pH adjustment gets leaked out of the bottom. And um, what this also sort of acts as is a SIP, a sub-irrigated planter, uh, which is another way of growing figs where people have a reservoir of water at the bottom of their fig trees in their pots. And this basically, they fill that reservoir up and then it it acts as capillary action and kind of gets the water up into the top layer of the soil. And it constantly continues that process of keeping the soil in the top layers moist. And I think that's a great way to grow figs in that you're going to have a consistent moisture that way. The consistent Having a consistent moisture is of course going to lead to a very high fruit quality. The next important factor though is having a little bit lower amount of water than moist. You know, we have dry, moist, and wet. 
moist is really good, but even somewhere between dry and moist is probably ideal. Um, the most ideal for fruit quality, the most optimal fruit quality will be obtained somewhere in that range. So having periods that are not necessarily dry, but that are on the drier side are going to get us even further better fruit quality, which is why I don't really like sips and I don't really recommend them. So if you use sips, it's all up to you and I think it's a good method just for having consistent fruit quality, but I don't personally recommend them uh, for that reason. And this potential method here could be better because of that in that it's not going to really have so much capillary action that you're gonna basically have the top layer so moist all the time. But you are gonna have the roots in the of the fig tree down into that bedrock that's gonna be able to take some extra water if needed, extra moisture if needed, um, to make sure that the, the soil is being, having that consistent moisture content. Um, so I think it's a, a little bit better in my mind than a sip. Um, and I think that's a good reason to do it. And that's one part of it, right? The other part of it is the difference between, is the, the pH change and making those nutrients available and also just having those nutrients available, right? Um, so I guess it's really about those three things there um, that could potentially up the fruit quality of this whole, uh, by doing this process. So I think I wanna put this into practice this year for sure. Um, I hope you guys can join me along here. I wanna know what you guys think I should put in that bottom layer. You know, where can I get this super awesome lime? Cause there's definitely some better lime and there's some worse lime. The marble is probably a good idea. Also the oyster shell, probably should I mix this in with some soil? and give it more of a soil appeal. Maybe I can even add some clay to it. Um, who knows, right? It's kind of interesting, right? Um, I think it's a really interesting experiment that we should definitely do. And I definitely want to see the results of. Um, I guess a couple negatives of how this could uh, potentially be a bad thing. And I think this is really where it's going to be the balancing act of controlling that pH. If the pH is too high, it's gonna be a lot like the, the Paulo brother method that I did years ago. In fact, I did a video on that, of reviewing the whole process, reviewing how everything went for me that season. You can go back and look at that if you want. It's one of the earliest first videos I did. Um, so it's kinda of gonna be a nice balancing act of that pH level, keeping it around 7.5, I think. If it gets too high, that's not good because we wanna have the right level of vigor um, at all times. The more vigor we have, the more fruits we have. So it's a balance between maybe sacrificing a few fruits, but getting a higher quality. I don't know. We'll have to play around with it and see how all this works, but that's the one real negative that I can think of um, by doing this method. So I want to thank you guys here for watching this one. We will talk to everybody soon. Check out this post here that I'm going to post on, uh, <clears throat> on the blog on figboss.com. Subscribe at the bottom if you want to be notified when I make a new blog post. Also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button. We'll talk to you guys soon. We'll see you for tomorrow's video, all right? Take care, guys.